There's always going to be, always going to be different diversities of opinion when it comes to what they call, quote unquote, gun control here in America. I mean, after all, um, when you have a minority that is constantly trying to take the, right, the rights of the majority on this issue right here, there's always going to be a conflict of interest, always going to be a conflict of interest. In other words, I mean, you mentioned gun control to me. I mean, after all, my mind functions a different way. That means both hands on the gun and one finger on the trigger. That's what it means to me. Um, but other people mean restrict or either take away your actual right, liberty, and freedom to have a and possess a firearm. You know, I was in Bowling Green the other day, and I, I got my cell phone out, and, and I usually try to keep up with Jay Step 4 to see what's going on because a lot of times he's able to put videos out when I'm not able to put them out. And I noticed that he had a video on there. And I looked at the video and I said, my, 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 look at here. Now, where's the news media? Where is the news media all across America on this one right here? In Sacramento, California, at 3 o'clock in the morning, there were three armed guys that apparently came into a house. Listen to me very closely. Came into a house armed. And, I, I mean, a family resident. And there was a firefight that ensued that took place. The owner of the resident right there defended and protected himself, killing one, injuring two, and he himself got shot in the process. Are you hearing me? He was able to protect him, his family, and his children from those three. Now, think about it. Everybody always, what if, what if, what if, what if. Well, let's deal with some hypotheticals then. Let's just deal with it, okay? All right, look at this. What if that man was in his bed and all of a sudden these three goons are in there and they got guns to their family's head. Bottom line, somebody getting ready to die. No telling. I mean, let your imagination run. No telling what could have happened to the wife or the children. First of all, no trespassing anyway. Why are these goons in there anyway? You see what I mean? And when you turn around and you take at least in this country, by the uh, the people who so-called believe in gun control. When you take away the guns out of people's hands, or at least you try to take away the guns out of people's hands, how would, how would, how would that man defend himself? Huh? I think that man deserves a hand clap for able to, hey, he actually showed you what the Second Amendment is for. But you know the one thing that the people in this country refuse to recognize that the reason why the Founding Fathers wrote the Second Amendment the Second Amendment was basically written so that, that we could protect ourselves against a tyrannical government just literally gone wild. It is there to protect us from the police. It's there to protect us from the so-called lawmakers. And you know what? The lawmakers don't like hearing stuff like that. As a matter of fact, they love restricting information and keeping information from you so that you're not informed. Uh, now, I don't see American citizens just literally going out and want to just kill everybody in groves. It's just a matter of the fact that in all these areas here in this country, do a consensus survey. Check it out. In all these areas where there are no guns allowed and stuff, the criminals have it, the police have it, and the police don't do you a lick of good. Because when seconds matter, the police are minutes away. And that's the truth. Now, I want to include on this video clip right here, uh, Jesse Ventura, up against a liberal mindset. Uh, of this guy passively. And first of all, you have to understand, you look, when you're looking at Jesse Ventura, you're looking at a warrior, okay? you look looking at me, you're looking at a warrior. Our mind thinks different. But you look at this guy right here, this guy has probably never even shot a BD gun in his life. So, hey, no doubt, when you look at it. Now, the, the audience is getting ready to give their consensus in this whole matter. And it's an old video. You've seen it before. Um, and at the end of this, I'm going to actually prove to you again um, and maybe, or maybe I even include a link down there to where I actually had a, a 45 XD right here, and I commanded for the thing to shoot me, and it never did respond. It never did do it. It never did it. I still say my sentiments are right. I still say my sentiments are right that guns do not kill people. People kill people. And so when you want to try to use the irrational argument of a car was not created for that, yet there are more people that die on these public highways every single day every single day than people that are killed and murdered with guns in this country. And I'm with them. Hey, a car can easily become a weapon. I remember riding my motorcycle. I have a sport bike. 
Um, and I ride my motorcycle and I get these idiots that will come up behind me trying to tailgate. Um, and one guy actually tried to run me literally off of the road uh, simply because I was just riding my motorcycle. He, he looked over and he, and he started saying something through his wound. I couldn't get in it. And he started coming over on me and stuff. And I turned around and looked. Now, the good thing about it is, is that I have my race license. And so, therefore, I am a very skilled, a very skilled uh, motorcycle rider. And, I mean, I'm, I ride uh, what people call a crotch rock. Because I go to racetracks and I drag knees um, and I go 100, 100 plus miles an hour all the time. Um, but I, I'm very skilled. And, and I have a lot of control over the bike itself. But you know the only thing that stopped that guy, because he was using that vehicle as a weapon, my person was in danger. You know the only thing that stopped that guy, and if he would have persisted, it would have been an ugly situation. Let me just put it like that. The only thing that stopped that guy was, is that after I looked ahead and saw there was clearance front and rear, I pulled over into the oncoming traffic lane. Did y'all hear me? And I got up close next to him and I raised up my leather jacket and let him see my 45 ACP 1911. I let him see that. And then the next thing you know, I went ahead and I looked back. This cat was nowhere to be found. End of story. End of story. Now, how many times are people are threatened in this country, in this country, in some way, shape, fashion, or form, but it's never reported, you never know, just by the mere fact of, of me showing my weapon that stopped all that nonsense. You know what? That guy had a complete change of mind. I'm telling you this. If he would have persisted to continue to use that vehicle as a weapon to try to hurt, injure, or harm, or endanger my person, let's just put it like this. It would have been a very ugly situation. Very ugly situation. The only problem is, is that if you're going to have a jury of your peers, you got these people right here that's got this stupid mindset that nobody should have guns. And then, hey, and then you, and then the federal judge, oh, man, I, hey, sure I could have probably been thrown away for 20 years just overprotecting my own life from someone who thought that they had a right to perpetuate injustices on me, who thought they had a right to literally just endanger my person. I mean, people are just crazy. So that's basically what they're saying today. They're basically saying that they have a right that people have a right to rob you. People have a right to do you wrong and stuff. And the people have a right. To, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. A right to keep in the bare arms shall not be infringed. And that's just the bottom line. Anyway, check out Jesse Ventura right here. So. Back now with Jesse Ventura and our live studio audience. Gun control. This is something I've been very animated about uh, yep. all this year with all the various gun outrages, especially yep. the uh, appalling thing at the cinema in, in, uh, in Colorado. Yep. Why is it that Americans, to me it seems, so many Americans cannot divorce their right to defend themselves with a gun to the apparent right to go and buy 6,000 rounds of ammunition, high-powered assault weapons, and go and murder Americans? Well, the best thing I can tell you, Piers, is this. Mexico has strict gun control. You cannot own a gun in Mexico. And they had 20,000 people dead last year in the drug cartel wars. But Mexico has a very particular problem involving drugs. I can right. cite you Britain. All right. Average, well, let me just okay. throw it back at you. In Britain, for example, an average of 35 people a year are murdered with guns. In Germany, it's about 40 to 50. France, the same. Spain, the same. Italy, there's a pattern here. America, 11 to 12,000 a year. Yeah. This country has more guns than anybody else yeah. and more gun murders. Yeah. It, it's inarguable, isn't it? No, not it at is. all. It is. Because, because I was in the Philippines physically the day Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and made himself a dictator. And the first thing that dictator did, he gave the people of the Philippines two weeks to turn in all their guns or it was the death penalty. Now, why would a dictator do that? 
Why would he make his number one priority when he took over as dictator to disarm the public? The Second Amendment is there. So and it was ma put in there not for hunting and fishing like they like to say because back when they did it if you didn't hunt or fish you didn't eat it was put in there so the citizens would have the ability if their government became oppressive they could defend themselves against oppressive government and I think that overrules all the gun deaths because let's remember something a gun is simply a tool I have a gun safe at home, and I've never come home and heard those guns going off on their own. People kill people. All right, how many people here die because of car accidents of drunk driving? Do we go to the Ford Motor Company and tell them stop making these automobiles because people get drunk and kill people it's in a, cars? It's a facile argument. It's a what? It's a facile argument. There's no equivalence between drunk driving and lethal firearms. My point Wait is, a minute. I have a no car problem. is a 2,000-pound projectile no that can problem. go 100 Jesse, miles an hour. Jesse, I have no problem with an American believing that their right under the Constitution is that they can defend themselves, especially in their own home if they're being attacked and they have a, a weapon. It's also That's against fine. government. I have a big problem with a disturbed young man, as we saw in Colorado, being able to buy 6,000 rounds of ammunition and a high-powered assault weapon and go into a movie theater and blow away 70 Americans. I have a big problem with that. Well, and nobody else in America in high office seems to share that big well, problem. Well, I'll tell you what, Piers. I have a conceal and carry license. Had I been in there, I would have taken this guy out before he could have killed that many people. Well, I think that, again... But a... because, let's remember, police can't stop crimes. Police show up after they're over. Remember that. So when you talk about me not being able, if there would have been a legitimate conceal and carry in that theater, quite possibly they could have taken this guy out and saved people's lives. Or you lives. could have had the gunfight at the OK Corral in there and lost even more lives, couldn't you? That's what could happen. Anyway, let's take a well, break. What roll of the dice would you like? You'd prefer to be unarmed? How many people here think I make crackpot points? Yeah. <laughs> One. How many think I make sensible points? You're in a minority, my good friend. You're the minority. Let's. I said you made some sensible points. Let's go to another audience question from Jared. Uh... I am going to prove to everybody out here that guns do not kill people. Now, this little dip right here, this little tip right here, is a sign that this gun is loaded. There are, look at this, a whole bunch of rounds in this particular clip right here. Now, if guns kill people, watch this, watch this. Pastor Dow's life is getting ready to be ended. Watch this now, watch this. I'm going to lay this gun down on this desk. Okay, watch this. All right, gun, I command you to shoot me. Gun. Gun. I command you to shoot me. Jump up off the desk and shoot me. Do you hear me? I said shoot me, God. The gun is not obeying this lawful order that I just got finished giving it. Huh. So the fact of the matter is, is that guns do not kill people. People use guns to kill people. People use knives to kill people. And it's no secret, in this country, thousands of children every single year die in swimming pools. They drown. So should we ban swimming pools since swimming pools are so evil? Because there's more children that die in swimming pools that died up there in Connecticut. Every single year. Them evil swimming pools. We need to go after the swimming pool manufacturers and we need, to, we need to do something about these wicked people that cause all these children to drown. I submit we ought to ban all swimming pools.
Now, how ridiculous is that? People can use hands to kill people. I can kill a man personally myself in less than two seconds. So what's lethal? Weapons or the people who are using the weapons? I like to hear some of you people who are against guns answer this.